everybody. So, uh, one of my friends is getting married, um, and uh, he is a huge, huge D&D &D fanatic. Um, he's been kind of like a forever DM in our group, with like a few little breaks here and there, but like mostly been a DM in our group for years. Um, he also likes to play though, and, uh, and his, his wife is also kind of another forever DM who likes to play. Um, but uh, they wanted to hire me to paint their uh, cake toppers for their, uh, for their wedding. They got, they got 3D printed, you know, Hero Forge minis, and uh, they wanted to hire me. And of course I said no, like not to painting them, but you know, to uh, getting for them to pay me to do it because it's going to be my, my wedding present. But um, the Hero Forge minis, the, the layer lines, you know, like the, I, I almost wish that they had like sent me the files because I wish, I, I think I could have gotten better prints, you know, better resin prints out of my printer. But um, anyways, yeah, I did my best to <laughs> try and cover up the layer lines. But uh, yeah, show you how I painted my friend's minis for their wedding. So I've got some uh, minis for one of my friends uh, getting married, and these are going to be their cake toppers. <laughs> um, so these are Hero Forge, right? I'm pretty sure that they're resin, and then they I got them like this, he, or he ordered them and he got them like this. They they I don't know they the prime job. Jury's still out on it. And the layer lines are a little bit... Uh, I, I mean, these are... I'm pretty sure, almost positive, these are resin. But you can see, like, the layer lines are a little bit bad in some places. Um, not bad. But um, I'm not going to reprime these. I'm, I'm going to... I'm just going to leave them gray. And then I'm going to do a... Uh, well, a Zenthal Prime uh, first, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to try doing like a contrast paint or something like that. So I want these to be lighter anyways. So yeah, time to do a, a Zenthal Prime. Okay, first off, just going to do a Prime or a, a first coat with VMA White. From above, and uh, I like to thin model air down just a touch before I put it in the airbrush, just a little bit, about like uh, skim milk kind of consistency. So I decided to go extra light on the um, the ride <laughs> uh, because I'm just going to use this white for her wedding dress and uh, go ahead and I'll, I'll do a lot of it with the airbrush, but you know, go ahead and get the prime or the highlights in there. And uh, but I'm just going to do a lot of this broad stroke stuff with the airbrush. But I want to kind of get her from, you know, top down, but also, you know, like 45 degrees with the wedding dress because the wedding dress is going to be mostly white. Okay, so I, uh, I flashed these off a little bit just, you know, no, no paint, all air pressure just uh, to kind of dry them off a little bit, but I don't want to actually touch them with a paintbrush until they're totally dry. I want to do a little bit of dry brushing on these to get some, some more of the highlights. Uh, so, 
just going to wash them off a little bit and then let them just sit and get nice and dry. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, he looks, he looks pretty good. Just want a little bit of highlights on him since this suit is going to be way, way darker. Okay, got these two Zenithal primed. I think I am going to go ahead and do a little bit of dry brushing. Um, there's some ridge lines, you know, in these prints. I think I mentioned that before. I don't want to pick up the ridge lines, really. Um, if I do, I'll just smooth them out later. But uh, I'm going to use a, a super soft... Uh, makeup brush to do a little dry brushing. Um, these are great. These like elf makeup brushes. They're super, super cheap. They're like $2. They're like Target or wherever. And then um, they, uh, they do a great job. Okay, so I, I need a white. Uh, I like this, uh, this P3 Sickly Skin for, uh, for a white. Sort of an aspen green almost. So I just want to pick up like highlights, like folds in the clothes and stuff. And um, no, it's not really picking up ridge lines. Not really. Tiny bit. But I can smooth those out later. But I want to get details like, you know, faces and things like that. And again, you know, staying like top down. But, uh, just gonna kind of get a few little highlights in there that I, that I can't get with the airbrush. You know, like details where it's just a little too tight. But I want to leave my shadows. Yeah, so normally I would work dark to light with uh, speed paints or contrast paints or, or what have you. But um, because, so both of them have uh, uh, dark hair and um, his suit is mostly black. Or, yeah, his suit is black. I'm going to work from dark to light and then I want to kind of put some little pin pin washes just in like uh, fabric folds and things to pick up uh, little hem lines and stuff. Um, so and then I'm using like a sable. I've actually I found that some that the the speed paints and like the contrast paints they seem to work a little bit better almost if you treat them like watercolors. Um, so, okay, I'm just gonna slop some on. Gotta clean up his hands. If you do make a mistake with this stuff, just like watercolors, um, you can use a, a clean brush and then just kind of wipe it away. Just dab at the, the part where your, your boo-boo is. Use it like an eraser. Use a clean brush like an eraser. Okay, so I'm gonna try and do a little pin wash on her like hemlines and stuff. Uh, I just loaded up, I have a fine brush, just kind of loaded it up with water, and then I'm going to try and really get in there, uh, just to put in some little stuff to like define, because it's so white, just to make some other, you know, make the, um, the little fabrics uh, stand out where the little seam lines are. I'm trying to do a little, just a little pin wash with this stuff. And then if I need to come in and clean it up later, then that's fine. 
So yeah, I uh, try to come in and sort of erase some of my some of these hard edges with uh, with a little bit of water. Just kind of water it down a little bit, and that's working. Seems like it looks pretty good. Then I can come in and kind of pick up highlights later. But I'm just going to kind of uh, soften those edges a little bit. And like these, um, the the Army Painter paints, you know, again, like it works pretty well to, to treat them like um, watercolors. Because supposedly also they reactivate with water where the contrast paints don't. Um, it makes me think that that's, that there's something kind of more like a watercolor formula that they use in their paints because um, like they don't separate the way that the contrast paints do either. Okay, it's a subtle effect, but still it's gonna, it'll look nice. It's for their special day. Just make her sword hilt kind of darker in contrast. I think I'll do some metallic highlights on that later. Okay, and both of them have kind of dark brown hair. So I'm just gonna mix in some of this uh, hardened leather with the, the black. See how that looks. So I'm kind of working dark to light, like uh, like normal acrylics. Um, so typically like with watercolors, you would work uh, light to dark, like putting down your lightest colors first. Like in this case, it would be flesh tones and then flowers and things like that. And then hair last and, uh, or uh, black, you know, last. But with acrylics and oils, it's the opposite. You want to work dark to light. Put on your, your highest highlights last. Your lightest colors. But I'm kind of doing more glazing. Okay, and then keeping with going dark to light gonna do flesh tones and flowers all that last I'm a little bit disappointed that you can see the layer lines a little bit better or they're showing up a little bit you know with these paints I was hoping they wouldn't show as much I have some very specific instructions that uh, her shoes need to be blue and then her ribbon and her flowers need to be purple. <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to go around and clean up everything on the dress. And I'm going to let all of this dry too before I come in and start doing other highlights. But the dress is nice and dry. Do some edge highlighting kind of stuff. Get those nice highlights to pop out. Okay, and then for highlights for skin tones, I think I'm going to use this uh, luminous flesh color. And as you might notice, that as I'm going on. Um, I'm going to be using more and more opaque colors, so the the um, army painter stuff is going to be 
you know, it's it's almost like a wash, like a glaze, or a deeply colored, or a deeply pigmented wash, I guess is what they call it. Um, and then the the opaque colors, like my highlights and stuff, then that's gonna go on last. Um, but I wanna, you know, be uh, sparing in, in highlights because the, the they're called highlights for a reason. You want them to like stick out. But uh, like skin tones and stuff like that, since they're both light skinned, um, especially faces. Faces are a big focal point. So I'm just gonna put some highlights on the face. Just kind of edge highlight a little bit. Again, I'm a little bit bummed out that the layer lines are showing so much. But I want to leave my shadows in there too. Don't want to make the face completely bleached out. Want my uh, her flowers to stand out too, because that's a nice uh, a nice focal point too, instead of like a weapon or a, um, you know, something like that. So I can mix that in with the, um, the, the contrast, or not contrast, the, the army painter stuff. Kind of give it a little more body, but it'll still kind of, it'll still blend in with that color. And then I'm use, kind of using like the edge of the brush to do some edge highlighting, just come in and sort of hit it on the sides. And then I can mix more of this uh, pink in as I go, kind of as a, a transition. So I'm just gonna pick out the, the, the tippy top parts of the flowers that I really wanna stand out. You don't you don't want a lot of tip, a paint on the tip of your brush just to just a little bit to kind of pick up those highlights. Sometimes I like to stabilize my hand when I'm working too. Like I'll put my finger on and brace it against what I'm working on, and then just kind of. Go around and pick out some details. Okay, and then to do very, very last, I like to do metallic metals because uh, you can easily contaminate everything else with metallic flakes. Turn everything else into a metallic paint with uh, metallic metal. So I'm going to do like the tip of her, the edge of her sword, and then I'm going to do the hilt on this thing brass, and then I'm going to make this like a brass kind of gold color too. And a nice blood red for the goblet, for some wine in the goblet. And I'll just go ahead and sort of wet blend that in there while this is still wet. Careful, careful. So I want the edges to be a little bit darker and then this bright red to be in the middle. Okay, and everybody's gonna get a nice black rim for their base. So I'm gonna use uh, Thamar P3, Thamar Black for that nice uh, opaque, solid black. One coat and done.
Okay, it's the next day. Uh, <laughs> these guys are totally dry. The Alla Prima stage is over. The wet on wet, working wet on wet stage is over. Um, I really like, you know, I think that they, the, I especially like the bride. She came out looking really, really nice. Um, there's just a little tiny bit of cleanup that I want to do. Like this, I actually really, really like her metallic metal on her little sword hilt. <laughs> uh, or on the pommel, I don't know what you call that. But, um, I got a little bit on her dress. Like mostly just that was the thing was because, you know, I was working uh, dark to light with the, um, you know, the, the not contrast paints, um, speed paints. So... I had a lot of uh, like boo-boos on the, the white parts of the, the dress. Just wanted to, just had to go in and touch those up a little bit. Um, otherwise, I think she looks awesome. So the, um, the groom, he, uh, you know, I just did a, like a coat of the, um, army painter, what, what you call it, um, like they're, they're black and that looks good, but I want to put some highlights back in. Like I'm so it looks pretty good on its own. And I'm one thing that I like is that there's there's like no glossiness to it really. The only reason why you can see some glossiness is because the the light is right here and it's shining right on it. So I'm just gonna put some highlights back in. I'm just gonna use a gray and um I'm just gonna do um straight onto the sky. Think. Whoops. Just gonna use a little bit of neutral gray, maybe, uh, and then just kind of very sparingly, just kind of do a little bit of wet blending, like just kind of uh, put a. I'll show you. <laughs> put a little tiny bit on, right? Just a little bit. And then I'm gonna uh, two brush blend it. I'm gonna feather it out. So I take a dry, I take a, you know, I put a little bit of paint on in my highlight. And then I take a clean brush and then I smooth it out, feather it out. So you wanna kind of work down from, from your, uh, your highlight, right? Which is up here and then sort of push, push away from it and it will sort of smudge that highlight out. And um, uh, soften it. So I mostly just want to get some, just put some highlights in there just because a black, totally black suit is just boring. It needs some, uh, a little bit of a highlight. I want to keep some of these shadows and stuff though too. So I'm just going to kind of come in and like edge highlight a little bit and then feather it out. Soften those, soften those highlights a little bit. But you know, it's not totally black. It's not totally, um, not totally opaque. It's just dark like that might put a few more highlights in her hair because hers is her hair is they both have dark brown hair but hers is a little bit lighter but just put a few highlights in here not too much and soften them smooth them out sort of like dry brushing but it's not quite so uh, Stark.